be upon you all and welcome to the channel in this video we will continue discussing the setup for the database management system particularly the local environment which we will discuss in a moment inshallah bismillah and god willing but before we begin bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen sayyiduna muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawm al-din wa arda allahumma anna ma'ahum ajma'in allahumma amin allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama sallayt ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim wa barik ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidun majid we begin in the name of allah the most merciful in this life and in the hereafter we thank him for all of his blessings that he has bestowed upon us for they are innumerable and we pray that we follow in the footsteps of prophet muhammad peace be upon him and his fellow companions amen we also ask for prayers and blessings to be bestowed upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his followers, as they were bestowed upon Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and his followers. To recapitulate, we have two entities or two endpoints that are present within the use uh, or the domain of database usage. We have the user and we have the database this database as we mentioned previously requires a server for two purposes the first purpose is persistence to save the data within the database permanently and the second purpose is to connect that database to the internet to grant the user its accessibility. The user cannot gain access to the database unless it is connected to the internet. Except for what we will tackle today, which is known as the local environment, and we will discuss it shortly. So here we have the server. This server allows the database to connect online and then it becomes accessible to the user that way the user can save data but also retrieve data without the internet connectivity the user does not have access to the database because of our limited budget in this course <laughs> we will not be using a proper server for the database because we do not have perhaps you do but i do not <laughs> i do not have the money to purchase an actual server store the database on that server and then connect it online besides this is merely a tutorial that can be extrapolated to an actual working environment <clears throat> Because we do not have an actual server that we can use, we can use the computer, the personal computer or the desktop or the laptop that you are working on as the server. Remember, any computer can function as a server, provided that it has internet connectivity, of course. Because we will be using our local device our own device this is known as a local environment the device that we will be that we will work on is our own it is not an industrial server or it is not a professional server it is a personal computer so it is a local environment also known as a local host when you see this term local host it indicates that the developer or the user utilizing a particular functionality is using his own computer for that demonstration or that purpose so this server here will be our own computers 
so that database will actually be stored on our hard drive or on our server, on our personal computer. So our own personal computer will function as a server. However, <coughs> oh, Alhamdulillah. However, for security purposes, obviously, we will not connect the database to the internet. So the database will function with internet connectivity in mind. However, because we have not deployed it to the internet, our database that we will create for this course will not be available for others to use. It will only be available to us. So we are the one and only user. Unless someone else uses your device, that is a different story. What that means is we cannot have another user trying to access the database in a local environment or in a local setting. So for example here, this is not allowed. Why? Because we are not truly connected to the internet because we are using a local device or a local host or a local server, however you wish to phrase it, this is unacceptable. In a proper setting, this will be acceptable, obviously, and a good example to that would be the Amazon website where multiple users can access the database, which is basically the inventory or the stock of multiple items on the Amazon website which is stored on the database. But because we are using our own computer, we do not wish to grant access to strangers or grant uh, access to our own computer to strangers. So that is why it is a local environment. It is localized. Only one user can access that database and they can access it locally within the confines of your own network the network at your home or the network at your your work sometimes if you are developing a new application you will start developing it and testing it locally before it is actually produced for the entire enterprise Now, to connect to the internet, we need what is known as an IP address. Because the nature of the IP address is beyond the scope of this tutorial, we will not discuss it fully. We will mention it briefly. For a router or a modem, though technically it is a router, the precise term would be a router, or a router if you want either or, to connect your computer to the internet, it needs an address. Similar to how your house requires a street address for deliveries, your computer requires an IP address. It is the address on the internet. Your house has a physical address on the street your computer has a virtual address on the internet. This is known as an IP address. I forgot what the IP stood for. <laughs> it has been a while. Uh, internet protocol? I will have to research. I will have to search it. I forgot to be quite honest. It has been a while. Different computers and different networks have different IP addresses for an IP address to be local, as in <clears throat> for an address to be localized within a neighborhood, if we are using <clears throat> the example of an actual physical address for a house, to have an address localized within a single neighborhood, we need a specialized IP address. This IP address has the following 
numbers. 1, 2, 7, point, 0, point, 0, point, 1. Whenever you see an IP address begin with 127, know that this IP address is a local environment. As in, it does not grant access to the outside world. It is only accessible to a single user, and that is the user who is using the actual computer or the actual device. That is why this address 127 is known for testing purposes. It simulates the functionality with respect to internet connectivity. So it simulates the functionality, but it does not actually connect you to the internet. So when you are using this, you are safe from any out, uh, extraneous accessibility. Once we actually deploy the database on, a, on an actual server, then it will have a different IP address that is detectable by routers on the internet. But since we are using our own devices, we do not wish to grant access to extraneous users. We only wish to limit accessibility to a single user and that user is yourself, the one who is using the computer. <clears throat> now remember, th these two terms are synonymous and interchangeable. So whenever you are designing a local environment, you will either see this or you will see this. Both are the same. However, uh, it is written differently. When you see a local host it will actually be written like so it will be written like so one word without any upper cases and without any spaces that is how it is actually written this is written as a title not as the actual <laughs> vernacular so what we need to do now after you have assuming you have installed all of these from the previous video and you probably have noticed that I upgraded I had 8.0.33 and I upgraded to uh, 0.34 so what uh, assuming that you have downloaded and installed all of these now we need to set up our local host our local environment our local server and we will use the MySQL server functionality to actually create our own server. You may have seen this setup through the video for Web Dev Simplified. I honestly, I do not remember if he showed that option in the video or not. I watched it a long time ago, so I do not remember. And from my experience installing this on a different computer, it does not normally ask you to create a username and a password for a server when you install it for the first time. But I will show you what needs to be done. If you installed this, you may have encountered this menu. Next, next. Uh, I do not remember the current yeah I do not remember the current so I cannot really <laughs> I cannot configure this so what I can do is show you the uh, workbench it would have asked you for a username and a, and a password for your server and it may not have, uh, as I mentioned, from my experience installing this on a different computer, it did not ask me the first time, so I had to actually create a username and a password. Ignore these, we will create our own connection. These are connections I used for personalized, um, what is the word, projects, yes, that is the word personalized projects but we will cover similar projects in this tutorial 
So what we will need to do is create our own server. Since these are local ser uh, local environments, we you can create as many as you want. Of course, the only limitation or restriction would be your device's capabilities. So we will cl click here on the plus sign. Let us give a name to the connection. This is irrelevant. This is for your own reference only. It does not have to be. It does not require a particular name that you need to remember later on. So what we can call it, uh, we can call it tutorial to match the nature of this video. Then this is what is actually important. The host name, that is basically the IP address. If it was deployed to the internet, this would be a completely different IP address. You can leave it as it is, as you can see here or you can replace it with localhost, like so. Both are correct. Use whichever one you want. I will keep the one that was provided to us by default. This can be changed, but leave it as it is for now. We will discuss what ports are later on, bi'ithnillah and God willing. Then you need a username to access your own server and a password. Your username and password are arbitrary, so you can design them as you see fit. I will call this admin and the user's password. Uh, let us create one. I will call it admin for simplicity and then test connection to ensure that the server creation or the local environment creation was successful. And it was successful, perfect. Then we click OK, and you will see it appear here. In your case, this may be the only connection present. These two are for my personalized project, so you do not have to worry about those. Now let us look at this URL here. If we divide it, the left side indicates the local environment 127.0.0.1. Then you see a colon. When you see a colon, know that the number following the colon is known as a port number. This port number is unique to my SQL. As far as I know, there could be another program that uses the same port number. Highly unlikely since the people who design these software with port numbers in mind normally tend to avoid port numbers used by other applications. As far as I know, there are certain circumstances where you find two programs that share the same port number. Do not worry about ports for now. We will discuss them later, bi'ithnillah and God willing. For, for now, understand the syntax. The local environment, or basically the IP address, if we wish to use a generalized term, because if you have your server deployed online, then this will not be localhost. This will be a different IP address that is actually accessible from uh, the internet. Then the colon separates the IP address from the port number, which is always after the colon. The IP address or the environment is before the colon, and the port number is after the colon. Now let us click on the server that we created here. And then you will see this setup or this interface. <clears throat> Some databases, this symbol represents databases or schema, either or. You can use them interchangeably, though there is a difference between a schema and a database, but we will discuss this possibly at the end of this tutorial because it is not truly that important now. 
it will become important later of course bithni Allah and god willing some of these are pre-existing i believe it is sakela school sis and test though school i am unsure i honestly do not remember the others are my own projects so you do not have to worry about those but some of these will be pre-existing they are provided as examples to you through what you installed previously i believe it was this if you installed this these are the databases installed with the samples and examples oh those rhyme nice <laughs> And there we have created our own local environment. So we have created this. Now we can create a database and store it on this server that we have created. What you need to remember from here onwards would be the username and the password that you use to create your connection. I used admin for username and admin again for password for simplicity. Remember, this is a local environment, so no one has access to it. Only the user of the device, which is you. So that is extremely important, particularly when we want to either access the database from the shell or the console or the terminal or we wish to create databases through the shell we will be asked for the username and password for the server remember a database cannot exist without that without the server why because of the two purposes we spoke of previously persistence we wish for that data to be saved permanently so it needs to persist. And the second purpose is to provide internet connectivity or online connectivity for extraneous access. And that is it for this session. In the upcoming episode, بإذن الله and God willing, we will tackle syntax, uh, or not syntax, but um what is the word i am searching for mm, not syntax um, i guess you could say queries not really queries but we will hmm, i do not know the technical term for it but what we will cover would be different scripts or different queries or different keywords to try and be as precise as I can for different functionalities. We will cover keywords for creating a database, for creating tables within that database, and so on and so forth. Though perhaps before that I will have a video to delineate the structure of a database. So a database can contain multiple tables. Each table contains an attribute and a record and so on and so forth. Then we can actually start by creating our database, then building upon it from there. I hope this lect lecture was helpful and beneficial to you all. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Be safe, take care, and peace be upon you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alamin innaka hamidun majid.